Is this the end of Finfluencers? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to talk about an ABC article which is discussing Finfluencers. Now these are social media influencers on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and some of the TikTok ones you'd worry about, that give financial advice or just, you know, uh, suggestions. Now, I wouldn't really consider myself a Finfluencer, although I do discuss finance, I do discuss the economy and economics. The only time I ever really talk about my own investments directly are just the strategy of buying shares for passive income, or that time I bought AGL and it crashed afterwards, so don't listen to an architect for financial advice. But you find there are lots of people out there, and this is what gets me, is They'll, they'll talk in videos and, you know, they might give their advice or tell you what they're doing with their trading strategies or their shares. And, you know, you, that could influence you, it could not. It's not, everyone should be aware that it's not personalized advice. You're not going to a professional getting that advice. But it's when they sell a course, like when they sell a course online, you know, subscribe for my master course in, in short trading or buying this or how to buy these shares or this stupid thing. Now, I've never bought one of those. Don't get me wrong, I love un- online education. I think online courses are fantastic. I am a huge fan of Linda. And when uh, what, last year, when uh, the channel was just growing crazy, we had hundreds of thousands of views, o- over half a million. I think we got 600,000 views in one month. I had people coming out of the woodworks reaching out to me to encourage me to, to make courses and sell this content to your viewer and put all these courses together to sell them. And I thought, okay, well, what, what could I do? My field of expertise, I'm an architect. Rachel and I have taught in the postgraduate level. We help with the practice of architecture lecture series at the Institute of Architects here years ago. Maybe we could do a course like that. There's some really good examples out there that have kind of disappeared. We could do something together helping people prepare for their registration. Years ago, I made a little app that we sold on on the Heiser Games website that people do, a little quiz to help people prepare. But the, well, I'm going to sound like an old fart here, but the exam has actually gotten easier. I was just talking to a former staff member who came to borrow the scanner, and I'm bugging him, you finally registered. Because to be an architect, to actually say you're an architect, you need to be licensed and you need to pass an exam and interview and all of these things. And the exam back when I did it, if you got, there's like five questions and you needed to get, I think, 75% right. And if you got anything wrong, you lost points. So you pretty much had to be perfect and get them all right. You maybe have one mistake, if that, because it's a professional exam. So now they've gotten rid of that. You don't get docked points anymore, which is, which is fantastic, actually. It makes a lot more sense. So we, we were looking at that as a suggestion. And that would take a lot of work and the market really wouldn't be that big. Sure, you'd have a few thousand people graduating from architecture schools across the country for a course that would take a long time to develop. You'll find a lot of these courses that people sell are like get rich quick or how to make money or that type of thing or how I made money doing this or that or the other. And well, if you check out one of those courses... Check out the LinkedIn profile of the people selling you that course or made that course, okay? Because a lot of the Finfluencers or the, the people on YouTube that can be shelling you these things, they can make a lot of money from YouTube, everyone. I've done one sponsor, sponsored video. I did it some time ago, and this was for a product that I used already. It was for Gold Pass. I was using it for six months before it even they even approached me. I think I was one of the few people that actually did a video on it because, well, I prefer it to buy gold if that's what you're going to do compared to buying bars. Particularly when you see all these idiots sharing on social media like their silver stashes or their gold stashes and people can track down where they live and rob them. I don't, I don't get that. We're here now. You just have to trust the Perth Mint not to rob you, which could be an issue or not. So that that's the only sponsored content I've done. So, you know... and. We, did, we decided not to do that one. I thought maybe another architectural course on, on uh, volumetric modular construction, another highly specialized sector, which I don't know if it would really be worth it doing a course. I'll just create content. Now, I actually have, you know what? I Let's go down memory lane. I have another 
YouTube channel, everyone, and I'm just bringing it up. And this is Heiser Tutorials. Okay, hang on, let me jump over here. Here we go. So here's my education YouTube channel. This is how I started making YouTube content, guys. Back in the day when, we'll have a look here. Wow, that, well, that was seven years ago, that, that, that video. Back in the day when I was tutoring at university, I had a bunch of interior design girls that didn't know how to use computers, and I was teaching them how to use drafting software. So I ended up making tutorials explaining little things. And if you go really far back, you can see some of these, you know, these tutorials I made like nearly over a decade ago. You know, introduction to using EndNotes for referencing Archicad, these type of things. We just put these up here. You could do a course like this now in Rivet or Archicad. But then again, that'd be a lot of work as well. And there's a lot of competition now. I'd rather just give it away for free or leave it here. And I'm occasionally putting stuff up now. Uh, you know, Ethereum mining, um, copying tables from PDF to Excel. And this is more just my memory now, my memory bank that I put it here. So I asked the viewers, I asked you how many of you have bought a course from a, a YouTuber or a Finfluencer? Because that's a big part of this article we'll, we'll be looking at. So 9% said yes, which surprised me. Uh, and 91% said no. So let's have a look at some of the comments here. Yeah, nah is saying, uh, the biggest property boom is coming in 2022. Happiness comes down to how much debt you can quicksand into. It's a new theory. If you know that bloke, tell him I reckon he's a grub. I've seen those ads. And that, that's another thing with, with YouTube. If you're in the finance space, talking about finance, business, even crypto, you, get, you attract a different type of advertisers to your channel. And depending on where your audience is from, their age demographic, their wealth, their gender will depend on how much money you can get with your advertisements. If you're getting the, the fin, the property guys, the financial guys, how to get rich quick guys, they will pay a lot more for the ads, like significantly more. And a lot of those, there's, all, there's scams as well you can see in the advertisements. How many of you have seen Elon Musk shilling a MasterCard crypto scam and YouTube aren't doing anything about it? And some people are dumb enough to fall for it. I guess you'll learn the hard way. So Michelle's life, she's actually talking about property investment accelerator worth every penny. So I don't know if that's a real post or not, or an advertisement. Uh, it's all free on YouTube. The minute someone tries to sell you something on YouTube, all credibility is gone. Yeah, but they make a lot of money like that. You see all these people that do drop shipping. They'll start up a course to sell, teach people how to do drop shipping. I keep getting the ads from this, this woman, this pommy woman now. She, she was doing drop shipping courses now, self-publishing books. Because I'll be up there painting the house or doing some work with the earphones in, and I can't skip these bloody ads because I'm not paying for YouTube premium. And so I'll have to put up with this stuff until I climb down the ladder. Vote Labor out in 2022 said, guess it will be easier to sell a subscription service, data news deals, than provide updates rather than a general education course because people expect that for free now. True, true they do, but a lot of people are selling them. I mean, I've done some, paid for some courses specifically for, for uh, computer game design, specific topics and software I wanted to use, but a lot of it, a lot of it is free now or even just buy a few good books. So, uh, where's the I'm not an idiot option? And I said, that's the no one there. A uh, Hubert, um, someone trading, the worst course, I could have just taught it to myself in the end. You'll find that's, yeah, that, that's what I've, I've seen a lot of too. Um, new Money was a rehash of uh, Phil Town's rule number one, but good. Okay, from Aussie Viking. You'll find a lot of the stuff is rehashed. It's, it's very, you know, I, I discovered all the Dave Ramsey stuff. And then we've got, you know, the, the bucket system here. What, what's his name? Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Poor um, Barefoot Investor. A lot of it is very similar. Um, a swing trader, James invested in. Uh, meet Kevin Stocks and Psychology of Money. If no, so yeah, buy books from Lee. The Barefoot Investor from Pape, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, I mean, that's a suggestion there. Buying books, you keep them forever as opposed to an online course. So 
with that in mind, let's have a look at this article here, everyone. So let's uh, let's have a look. Did ASIC just kill the Finfluencer? Corporate regulator cracks down on unlicensed advisors. Now, if I'm telling people to uh, save money, pay off your debt, find multiple sources of income, that's not really specific financial advice, is it? I assume that's common sense. Okay, I assume it's common sense and sometimes people just need to hear it from someone else. That, that's what I'm assuming. Or some people may not have been exposed to it thanks to our education system. That's the concern. Well, let's have a look at these Finfluencers. Social media content creators known as Finfluencers are hugely popular with young people. But they could end up in jail or with a million dollar fine if they don't shut down. Finfluencers and social, are social media content creators who talk about money, budgeting, and investing. Most do not have a financial services license. Well, here's the question. Are we moving beyond the need for a financial services license? Do we need the government to license people talking like this? That, that's, yeah, this, is, this is an intervention in the market trying to, to regulate it. Or maybe do you have to get, jump through and get a license? I mean, as an architect, you have to be licensed to call yourself an architect, but building designers compete with us. Even certifiers will tick off saying someone's the equivalent of an architect. I was shocked and really pissed off when I found out a certifier could just do that. So it kind of throws out all of my CPT, all of my education, everything out the window if you just, you know, a buddy-buddy with a certifier. It'd be even uh, more frustrating for people coming overseas who have to jump through all the hoops to get their qualification recognized here in Australia. Oh, it's a mess. Anyway, the corporate watchdog's ASIC's crackdown on unlicensed financial advice has seen influencers scramble to take down posts. But there are concerns the new guidelines don't go far enough to protect consumers. In 2021, 28% of young people said they followed at least one influencer on social media. Of those who followed a Finfluencer, almost two-thirds, 64%, reported having changed at least one of their financial behaviors as a result. Is that a bad thing? If they're telling you to save money. So let me say, if I tell people, one, one advice I would give to save money is do your shopping monthly. So that means you, don't have, you have less opportunities to go out and make impulse purchases. If you go shopping four times a month, that's four times you can buy that extra chocolate bar. Now, is that financial advice? No, it's common sense. But maybe ASIC needs to protect people from things like that. Last year, the ABC reported on concerns that some influencers were breaking the law by providing unlicensed financial advice. It was a view that was dismissed by Financial Services Minister Jane Hume, who said uh, influencers were no different from those who shared advice and money tips at the pub. Yeah, that, that's how I see it. That seems common sense. ASIC has now released guidelines that make it clear that unlicensed influencers could face five years jail time or fines of more than $1 million if they talk about stocks, investment funds, or financial products. Like specifically, I'll have to, I'll have to go through those guidelines, guys. Greg Yanko, Australian Securities and Investment Commissioner's Executive Director of Market Supervision. Yeah, we're really a free market, aren't we? said influencers could not rely on disclaimers on posts or an exemption that applies to media commentators. If you're an influencer and you're providing financial advice, then we expect you have a license. In fact, you're required to have a license. And if you don't have a license, then you need to be careful not to provide financial advice, Mr. Yanko said. The safe areas of providing information are about what is a share. Okay. And what are the different types of investments you can make without going to the stage of suggesting particular types of shares or investments wouldn't or wouldn't be appropriate? Okay, so not going on a specific product would or wouldn't be appropriate. But uh, it's, it comes down to the individual. This is the thing. You've got to do, well, you've got to look at your own research. Even the financial advisors, you need to look to see how they're getting paid where their kickbacks are from. ASIC guidelines follow the regulator taking court action against uh, Tyson Schultz, also known as ASX Wolf, 
who the uh, the regulator alleges made 1.16 million in 10 months selling stock market courses. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised, everyone. I can see that revenue coming in, definitely. You know. So asset guidelines also ban unlicensed influencers from sending followers to financial products for the purpose of trading. Some influencers have earned money online through advertising and partnerships with companies and financial products to quit their day jobs. Uh, Angel Zong, Associate Professor of Finance at RMIT University, said ASIC's rules would kill the influencer business model. This is a wake-up call for influencers. So can I, not, can I not plug my referral codes to self-wealth? Maybe I can't anymore. Maybe I can't anymore, guys. I'll have to look into it. Which is a shame because yeah, is it really plug? I guess it's plugging a brokerage. A lot of influencers have removed affiliate links on their pages and removed posts where they recommend a financial product or declare they no longer make this recommendation. The influencer Alex Nikolic is a full time corporate lawyer who makes around 4000 a month from her Broke Girl Wealth Instagram and TikTok accounts, which have a combined following of around 70,000. However, she said none of that money was through advertisements or affiliates with financial products. She's one of the main influencers to have removed online posts about her social media pages from her social media pages as a precaution. I don't think it will be the death of the influencer. I think it will be a change and a number of people, myself included, will look to potentially if they want to continue operating, either getting a license just to make sure they are beyond reproach of the regulator, she said. Ms. Nikolic uh, has questioned why ASIC's guidelines focused on social media content creators. She says the law should apply to everyone. Or maybe we need to just start pulling away the laws. Or is it... I, can't, but I mean, selling a course. You've got freedom to buy it or not. It's a little odd that this spotlight has been placed on financial content creators who ostensib when ostensibly books about investing, shareholder conferences, and even TV shows are giving far more prescriptive monetary advice and investment advice without a license. So ASIC rules don't cover crypto. Are you kidding? <laughs> There's a big haul in ASIC's new guidelines. They don't cover cryptocurrency or property. There you go. Okay, so... Our, all the property gurus on Facebook that are shilling these courses. That are just, oh, boy. There you go, everyone. So rather than... It's going to be easier for a influencer to bullshit about going into property than you know some investment in the stock market that's probably much more diverse and much less volatile. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, th this, is the, this is government regulation. Okay, this is to protect you. So they're limiting the opinions that you can get. It's like the guilds, isn't it? Gatekeeping. ASICS has previously raised concerns about pump and dump crypto scams on social media. Yeah, these are more of an issue than someone suggesting some sh uh, st shares. It's when someone artificially inflates the share price of a stock or cryptocurrency by really talking it up in order to increase trading. Once the price increases, scammers sell the shares at an inflated price. In 2021, the ACCC received 10,412 reports to ScamWatch that mentioned cryptocurrencies with 129 million losses. Of these, 4,730 were investment scam reports with 99 million in losses. Mr. Yanko acknowledged ASIC could not tell influencers to stop talking about cryptocurrencies because it was unregulated and not a registered financial product. It is an area that concerns us because of the lack of protections. But at the moment, ASIC is not able to regulate crypto assets that are not financial products. So if you do invest in those products, you're effectively on your own. Ms. Sang said there was danger that influencers could switch from regulated products to talking about cryptocurrency instead. Yes, that is 100% a danger there. So you're, you're, this is where the ASIC trying to protect the dumb, stupid consumers is going to make it more dangerous. This is over-regulation to death. 
may, maybe maybe we just need to emphasize that people need to have individual responsibility and capability. Oh, soon, soon, shit, I'll need a license to talk about that, to advocate for being individually responsible for your bloody life and not having the government wipe your ass. Oh, boy. Uh, anyway, the current guidelines only apply to financial products. So maybe they will see this as a loophole and turn to unregulated financial products. Ms. Nikolic said it didn't stack up that it was okay to talk about cryptocurrencies but not regulated financial products. It's a bit of an absurd outcome that the ATO can treat cryptocurrencies as an investment and tax it, she said. It really does mean that bank accounts, superannuation, shares, and ETFs are all a high-risk class of content. Oh, sorry, all a high-risk class of content than talking about cryptocurrencies. I mean, that's... Here's the thing. Some people are only ever going to learn about exchange-traded funds through influencers through youtube or they're going to get about superannuation shares so barriers to getting financial advice due to well our education system sucks we don't have any exposure to it probably because all the people teaching there have never run a business but anyway judith fox ceo of stockbrokers and investment advisors association welcomed asics guidelines for influencers miss fox said she'd been particularly concerned about sun influencers on social media engaging in what is known as pump and dump scams are they influencers or are they con artists that's the difference you have some of the influencers who are talking about particular stocks which they probably own and then people would pile in to buy at the high price and then the person would make a lot of money and dump the stocks so the other would be left with the valueless stock she said <laughs> see, see guys i'm doing it wrong i'm telling you when i buy the stock and then it then it then crashes I shouldn't bag on my, my AGL buy. I just uh, dollar cost averaged in. Much, much more money. <laughs> I'm in the green again. Yay. <laughs> oh, boy. If you're dealing with a li licensed financial advisor, you have access to the Australian Financial Complaints Authority, ASIC. The regulator will be keeping an eye on things. In terms of stockbroking and investment advice, you're also subject to market integrity rules. So where to hit from here? The popularity of influencers has coincided with a boom in millennials investing in shares. Ms. Song said young people flock to influencers because of the high cost of obtaining advice from licensed financial advisors. Because, well, there's the cost of becoming a financial advisor, and then you've got to recuperate that because it's regulated to protect people. So the people providing advice for free are now shifting to crypto and dodginess. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, government, for protecting us. The Financial Services Council recently estimated the cost of producing advice to be over $5,000. The young generation love investing, but they are hungry for knowledge. Marissa Broom, Chairwoman of Financial Planning Association of Australia, agreed access to financial advice should be more accessible, but she said they should have a level of qualification. For a country that is, we're not a wealthy country, has a good superannuation. Do we have a good superannuation system? We have really low financial literacy. Yeah, because people are babysat through their whole bloody lives. There needs to be a level of consumer protections. Well, let's let's have a talk about this one. So what do you think? Do you think we need ASIC to come in here and pro protect people from the bad influencers? I mean, sure, there's people doing the pump and up, but the fact that they're not going after cryptocurrency, the fact that I did a video years ago about a cryptocurrency scam that was an obvious scam that was an ASIC registered business, and what did I get? What did it get me? It got me a lawsuit suit threatened, uh, and um, ASIC didn't give a shit. A Triple C didn't give a shit. The federal police didn't care, and then all these people lost their money. Still waiting to get sued. An Australian law firm working for criminals. How's that ethical? So, yeah. You tell me what you think, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I can't do my outro now, because I guess I'm not allowed to do it. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys. It's, uh, I, uh, I think it's going to have worse consequences than people realize. You've got most of influencers are talking about sensible things. And it's going to drive them to talk about stupid stuff. And then people selling courses on dodgy property and crypto garbage. Anyway, have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Oh, 
boy. Of course. Not going after crypto.